I'm Delta Work, and it's time for Very Delta. Trixie Mattel is here, but first, do you want to see me go off? Because I think you want to see me go off. M. Oh. M. Mom! Are you a lady like me? Introspective, beautiful. Oh, are you intellectual like me? Beguiled by a bargain? You like wild times? Oh, like me? Are you serving the community like me? Well, if you are, then you must be very Delta. I'm Delta Work, and this is Very Delta a luxury public access podcast and YouTube talk show where I look gorgeous, speak extemporaneously, and invite fascinating people to sit on the couch and get very Delta. Very Delta is for the woman who, from time to time, thinks about Perry Gilpin as Roz Doyle on TV's Frasier. But first, let's get into some things that are very Delta. Do you know what my Very Delta listeners and viewers have shared with me? They've shared with me that I talk with my hands all the time. I know that I like, you know, hand model a ring because, you know, I love collecting rings and earrings and I love showing all that off. I love showing off my fingernails. Um, But I was only under the impression that I spoke with my hands when I was like trying to speak with my hands. Like, so if I was describing a shape to someone or if I was purposely pointing out a ring to someone or showing off a manicure to someone, I thought that's when I talked with my hands. I didn't realize that I talk with my hands almost 100%. Like as I'm looking up to the side here, I can see myself talking with my hands and I don't know exactly what hand gestures mean what like why they why they happen but i do think i know where they come from and that is they come from my mom they come from my aunts they come from all of the women in my family who really uh you know in many ways are the women who inspire inspired me to do drag even without knowing like it was never a a spoken thing and even as a kid i don't know that i ever was trying to be in drag other than you know, putting a towel on my head and pretending I was Diana Ross or something. Um, But, uh, you know, my, in the 80s and early 90s, uh, my aunt owned this salon. It was called Total Look Salon. And she did, she was a hairdresser for all her life. She graduated from beauty school in the early 60s. She worked in several hair salons. And uh, because she was always using her hands to shampoo and to do, uh, styles, this, that, and the other. And, you know, it was a different time, a, a, a different day. Um, she, uh, people weren't always wearing gloves for everything. You know, they would wear gloves for color processing or something. But my aunt would always have her acrylic nails done. And she always had like fuchsia or red or uh, peach or whatever the popular color, frosty colors, which I love. Um, and so I could see her like fixing people's hair and she would use her nails to dress hair. So, you know, you would back comb in whatever the style was, get it all in there, work it all together. Everything's you create like a sponge all the way around the head of of teased up hair. And this is back, of course, when ladies would go to the salon and they would spend all day there, you know, getting their hair done. And um, the style would last throughout the week and they would they would wrap their hair in toilet paper. This was still happening in the 80s, by the way, not all the time, but some it still happens now a little bit, not as much. Um, but I would see her get that base in there and then everything would be a zhuzh. Everything would be a, a, a bit of a finish or a flourish. And so uh, that was just always interesting to me. And that carried over to conversations with people. And I always remember uh, before it was sort of diagnosed, because my aunt was using her hands so much to dress people's hair and cut hair, uh, I think she had undiagnosed carpal tunnel. And so whenever she would take a little break to, to eat a sandwich or something at lunch or she would be at home, she would always go like this with her wrist. This would always be the thing. And every every one of my cousins and myself would always be like, oh, are you showing off your nails? Are you showing off your nails? And she would joke about it. But in reality, she was trying to alleviate the pain from her wrist. And so she would kind of joke with us and she'd fan her hands out and go, look at my beautiful rings. But what she was doing was putting a fun spin on the fact that 
she's actually in a lot of pain. And so it just became this running joke because she would talk with her hands. And I think people talking with their hands feel like they have to get something out to you. They're not getting it out with their words. And I definitely feel that way. But my aunt would talk about a recipe and she would say like, oh, these, these enchiladas, these were simple. All I did was roll the tortillas out. And she's, mind you, she's not looking at this. She's talking. So she's like, oh, it's easy. Just roll the tortillas out, put a little cheese on it. And you could see it, right? Put the cheese on it. Make sure you put uh, a generous amount of sauce and you could see the can or whatever it was, the ladle moving. And I think it just got stuck in my brain. And um, there's like other things. Like I, I have a friend whose grandmother used to say like, kind of, she would suggest like kick rocks, get out of here. And whenever she disagreed with what somebody would say, she would put her hand like this with her thumb and she would go, she would do that. And that you knew what that meant. It was kind of like an, a real dismissive, almost ugly kind of thing. And it's just something that something about that movement, I think, carries over with me. And I think about it uh, in describing it. I definitely know uh, during the pandemic, it probably heightened even more because we were doing so much digital drag and digital presentation. And that's really how I communicate with people. And um sort of really in many ways laid the groundwork for Very Delta when I would go live on Instagram. And so I would have just this small little window in which I could communicate with the world. So I was, you know, doing my best to sort of enunciate with my hands and explain uh, exactly how these things were planned out. Exactly like this is the way this goes. This is the way this goes. That's the way that goes. And it's just something that would happen. It's like you would want somebody to know that maybe was watching but couldn't see you that, you know, uh, I love you. This was a thing. And I still kind of do that, even though like this is like this is as out as this is. Like, do you remember when this was a thing? Like, I don't go that far into it. I'm sure once upon a time I did. But um, the idea of talking with your hands, my mom and my aunt specifically will just have this language where they are. um even without, even now, even though they don't wear, you know, they're a little bit older now and they don't necessarily have acrylic nails anymore, but the way they paint the story and the way they talk about how, how rich something is and how delicious it is and how the flowers were just, they were everywhere. I could see it. I can smell it. I can hear, I love that. I love that conversation that you almost can hear a conversation that I love that. I love a conversation that you can see because you might be on the other side of the room or your volume might be off on your phone and you can't hear it, but you know something is happening. And you can tell when, um, you can also tell many times when the conversation's a little more somber because that flourish kind of goes away a little bit. And uh, you know that there's like maybe a more serious tone to what's happening because they don't feel as, as, as joyous or as, as, as bubbling about a subject. Anyway, I think, I think it's, it's fun to look at. I think it's fun to uh, apparently emulate even without knowing that I'm doing it. Like I said, I know when I'm doing it. Cause I'm like, Oh, I'm trying to describe the pirouettes to people. Like I get the hand modeling idea. I understand that. But even without that, I will have conversations with people out of, dra I might be out of drag and I am still going nuts with my hands. But you can also tell when I'm having like a hard time checking into a hotel because that's like its whole own it, it, and that's its own whole experience. Right. Like, you know, you're you've, you've got your fingers going that the person at the desk is looking at you and looking at your ID and setting it down. And they like to put them both together and sort of fan them out and go, I'm not going to need these anymore. Thank you. And then they're back in here. And how long are you in here for us? How long are you going to be visiting us? And they'll check in and then they'll open up something and like fan it out and go, here's where we are right here. And here's where your room is. So you're going to walk down the hall. You're going to make a left and right here by the soda machine in the pool. That's where you are. Are you going to need a late checkout for this? And they'll enter that back in. By the way, uh, right over here in the lobby is where we're going to have breakfast in the morning. Continental breakfast between 7 a.m. and 10 p.m. They'll put it back in here and they'll take out some more. Here are your vouchers. And they'll like to set them down and spread them out with their fingers, especially if they've got beautiful nails or like, I don't know, a gorgeous um, 
uh, a tricolor gold ring, you know, like a, maybe a, a rose gold with yellow gold wrapped around in actual roses. They'll fan that out like that and they'll tuck their hair behind their ear and keep registering. Or when I go shopping for perfume, I, l I feel like um, even without knowing, I can feel like I can go back and see myself picking up a bottle of perfume. And I always like to spray it on my wrist, right? So I'll have this wrist out and I'll spray it like this. And then I have to smell it. And sometimes I'll even think I'm like wafting some more up so I can get as much of it coated inside my nose and smell it. You know, some people will um, spray perfume on and then they'll tap their wrists like this to sort of spread it around. And you don't want to do that. If you're ever doing that, you're breaking down the top notes of the fragrance. So the invitation of that fragrance is gone. You've taken that away. You've taken it away from the experience. So if you spray perfume on your wrist at the counter and you dab it like that and then you smell it, all you're going to get is the middle note and the base note. The top notes are, have already been broken down by this action, by going like this. Uh, it could be uh, something like uh, going to a vending machine. And I, I go and uh, here's, here's the machine itself, right? And I'm looking on here, um, do I want cookies? Do I want vanilla creams or do I want a honey bun? And then I'll put my coins in. And if I have nails, it's hard to do with nails but I'll put my coins in and it'll be 65 cents and I'll get them all in. And then I'll a, Oh, I pushed the wrong one. A 35. And then I'll push the machine and then you'll see it slide. Zoop, 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 zoop. And then it'll stop and it'll drop out a pack of dentine gum, which is not what I wanted because I put the wrong thing in. So I'll have to go through my purse, rifle through, open up a coin purse, click, and I'll go through and get a few coins out. I'll close that up. And then I'll go back over here and I'll... A35. Send it back down. I guess I'm having vanilla creams. I'm not having the honey bun, even though I thought I was having the honey bun. Um, I will just find ways to do this. And also, like, sometimes... A little pet peeve can't fix it it's just the way it is but you know we fry the little fish here um when my cup starts to sweat so like if I have like a, a a pint glass of iced tea at a restaurant and it starts to sweat I'll always get a napkin and wrap it around and sort of clean it off like that and get rid of that one and then I'll set another one down right here to absorb that because you know I don't want the glass to be wet but also I know this like this kind of emotion can be too much for some people, right? And I'm just trying to make sure that the cup is not as sweaty. That's why I would never turn it and go like this. Because that's way too suggestive for some people. Although the rim needs attention, um, I like to make sure and just do it more this way or this way. And, um, you know, and you can also you show off your nails that way as well. Would you like to see me take a break? I think you'd like to see me take a break. Do you know what's very Delta? Cereal. But being the gorgeous middle-aged woman that I am, I can't sling back bowl after bowl of sugary goodness like I once could. Luckily, there's a cereal company out there that has reimagined our favorite childhood tastes, but with grown-up ingredients. I'm talking about Magic Spoon. Magic Spoon is a game changer. With their unique blend of high protein and keto friendly ingredients, you can finally eat a cereal that is wholesome, high quality, and delicious. Its variety pack comes in four delicious flavors cocoa, fruity, frosted, peanut butter. They're all to die for, but I'm partial to the fruity. I love the taste, I love the texture, I love that it matches my fruity personality. Click the link in the description of this episode to grab a Magic Spoon variety pack. And be sure to use the promo code at checkout to get $5 off any order. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it is backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they'll refund your money, no questions asked. So go to the link below and use the code VERYDELTA for $5 off or go to magicspoon.com slash VERYDELTA to save $5 today.
My guest today needs no introduction. It's the one and only Trixie Mattel. Yay! Yay! Well, like we've literally been sitting here, um, probably recording, not recording, but talking about stuff that we could have been recording. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I just figured I would get the Diet Coke conversation out of the way right at the top. Because right. I figured at some point, I know from this pod that all roads lead to Diet Coke. They do. Yeah. They do. And do you ever, I mean, I know you have beautiful teeth. You don't want to fuck that up, but do you ever imbibe? Diet Coke? Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. Diet Coke is my favorite. In my fridge right now, we have the mini bottles. Mini bottles? Yeah, they're bottles about yay big. Mini bottles. Um, you know that That's queen? enough? Mini bottles. Is that enough to drink? It's fine. I mean, I, I also love the mini Diet Coke. Sometimes I just need that burn, that flavor, that hit, that taste, that crisp. And uh -huh. I just need truly 50% ice. To, okay. to Diet Coke ratio. And I like I'm, it. I'm good with that. You're good with that. You know, like a full a full soda is quite a lot to drink. If this is the soda and you put the straw in, if you don't want to fuck up, like, like possibly stain your teeth, do you stick the straw more down your throat or how do you do that so it doesn't touch the teeth? <laughs> I take like a boba straw and basically do a tracheotomy on myself. Okay. I mean, because when you have big fake teeth, I have fake teeth on top. Your fake teeth will not stain. Your organic real teeth will stain. Mm -hmm. So six to eight weeks after seeing the dentist, you'll notice my bottom teeth will start to slowly turn teeth colored while the big white fake ones are still big white and fake. It's like Colby Jack teeth. Yeah. I like that. Pretty much. It's like a habanero cheddar teeth. I like that. But, you know, it's great because then I look in the mirror and it gets me to go to a teeth cleaning. Like when once there's vanity involved, now I'll go to the dentist. You know what I do is, um, first of all, I have wooden teeth. And mm -hmm. then second of all, um, a lot of people, you know, because I move my hands or whatever, the trick is that you just go like this and that provides a filter and nobody knows how yellow your teeth really are. So you just do like this and you kind of give eyes half closed. They don't know. They don't, girl, they don't girl, know. And they you don't know what? Know. We used to say in drag, they get what they get. That was my like, after 2020 and all that, uh -huh. I was just like, girl, they get what they get. They get and they now get. the status has been... They got what they got. Yeah. That day where you're like, should I wear the high shoe or should I wear the comfortable shoe? It's like, girl, they got what they got. We already did all that. Like, I don't I don't participate in this like um, endless money. There are uh, endless priceless pursuit of extreme discomfort to uh -huh. impress who. Uh huh. I mean, drag is discomfort. But I'm not going to lose sleep over whether or not I put on that six inch nail. You know what I mean? Right, like right. They get what they get. Well, you know, it, it's interesting that you say that because uh, the other day um, and, and this is going to be a long walk, but isn't it always it, with um, you? Yeah. <laughs> it's always. <laughs> that's the only walking I really do <laughs> yeah. is in here. Yeah. Because if I had to physically get it, come on, that's not going to happen. Right. You know what I mean? The comfortable I, shoe. Exactly. Um, but the other day I'm at a stoplight and I look over and I'm right near my high school and I look over and I'm like. This Trixie on that bus, like, and it wasn't the first time I had seen like uh, obviously a campaign for something because you work like a workhorse and it's amazing. But Thank you. to be in the neighborhood that I was in, where ever nothing had changed, nothing yeah. has changed in the name. I graduated high school in 1994. Right. Nothing has changed. The jack in the box is there. This is there. But what had changed was the fact that this image of drag is so per like it has permeated and you have done that with your career, that visibility where people were walking by just looking like, oh, oh, yeah, um, that's probably her. half of them knew who you were. And the other half that didn't just went, oh, that's drag. Yeah, and totally. I thought, Fucking wow. Like that, that. Yes, it's you. It's your image. But I really, truly from my heart felt like this speaks for fucking everybody. That representation is for everybody. And it's right Thank outside you. of my fucking high school where I can remember people talking shit about the one guy who used to wear eyeliner or the one whatever. How does that feel? Like, it's crazy. I mean, I, I feel like in L.A. you're supposed to be like, well, it's not weird to see myself on TV because I always thought I would be on TV. You're supposed to play it very like, it's yeah. fine. I, I also still get scared when I see a famous person. I'm like, oh, you sure, know what I mean? Sure. That, that type of, yesterday we drove down Sunset and I said, I heard there's a Trixie billboard over here. Let's just see. It's a bit, it's right up right by the, it's right on Sunset with all the other big Sunset billboards. And it's right there above that nas that saddle ranch, that like cowboy uh -huh, restaurant. Uh -huh. It's right there. And I, a billboard is cool. We had them in Times Square. We've had them on buses. It's cool. But there's something about Sunset Boulevard. Yeah. Like, holy sh I was like, I have walked by Nicole Byer on these billboards. I've seen B uh, RuPaul on these billboards. I've seen Bianca on one of these billboards. It was just, I've seen the word here. Oops. 
I've seen the We're Here girls in these billboards. So it was very exciting to have my turn. I mean, I'm hardly the first drag queen to have some of those billboards, but oh, it really is cool. And right now there's the the Max, the HBO Max Trixie Motel billboards. Uh -huh. It's probably that's probably the one, the one with me and the sledgehammer. Yeah. 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 Who would have known renovation was our calling? But and then the other one, right now there's Queen of the Universe Paramount Plus billboards. Mm -hmm. So on some buses, it'll be like me and Graham Norton. And there's Trixie and Katya uh, Emmy billboards right now. Sick. There's it's three. Sick. There's three. Yeah. I'm like, we should have spaced these out. But I think I get a lot of what, what you're suggesting, which is people might not know who I am, but because my makeup is so psychotic and I've probably popped up on everyone's YouTube feed at some point, people see my eyes and I think they're like, oh, that girl. Uh-huh. So even if they don't know drag and they don't know my name, they're like, oh, it's that girl. But you know what? <laughs> they do fucking know because I like I cannot I cannot turn on TikTok or any TV show where people that are like, you know, cis uh, presenting women <laughs> with lashes. And I'm like, it's you saw that somewhere <laughs> and I fucking know where you saw it, bitch. So don't act like and you don't have any other makeup on but that. You knew you couldn't figure out how to do the rest of it. But you were like, but I can go to the beauty supply and get a lash. I they, know. They're copying. <laughs> I, have you seen Brittany Broski show this to me? It's these lash clinics where, you know, they they add semi-permanent bundles of lashes to uh -huh. the point where these women's eyes, they make my eyes look bald. They are it looks like fur, uh, black and it, fur. Yeah. And I'm like, how do you live? And it's always the before and after on the TikTok. And when they reveal the the after, uh -huh. the woman's eyes are always fucking bloodshot. Like, oh, pink eye <laughs> down. <laughs> like, ass eating session, just <laughs> fecal <laughs> in the eyes. It's great. And I'm like, I know it's supposed to be this glamorous reveal, but it's some bitch with bloodshot eyes with, by the way, not a stitch of makeup on? None. So this big of long, thick lashes with not even concealer is uh -uh. so deranged. Yeah. Lash, and I mean, I'm not going to tell people not to wear beauty products because, of course, I sell them. Right. But I would just say with lashes, life is short and, like, you know, life is short. Go big. But also, go small go with small. lashes. Go, like, a little smaller. Right. And that's coming from me. Right. I've right. gotten smaller lashes over the years. Yeah. I mean, for, you know, when I did, you and I met in 2015, maybe I was in Long Beach, I think doing executive suites uh -huh, uh -huh. and I did a show with you and I think we also did Sacramento together. Mm -hmm. We did like a little tour. It was a yeah, little yeah. tour together. And I just remember, uh, I just remember that was like it's yesterday. It was like so, it feels so recent, but I, you know how much makeup I used to have on compared to now. It was even crazier. Yeah. So take it from me. If I'm pulling a smaller lash, I think we can all. Look, look inward. Yeah, because it feels like they just get like a hairnet off of a wig and they're like, here we go. There's my lash. <laughs> they rub some maple syrup on their fingers and they're like, sure. Yeah. This looks good. Now, is this about the size lash you always wear? Uh, if I block my brows, this is the size I would wear. If I don't block my brows, I wear an even smaller lash than this. And I usually do a half or a three quarter. Like I'll cut it up because... I'm always afraid. I get, my eyes are two bubbles in a piss pot. You know this. Like, you can already deconstruct my face and know what it looks like, even if you, I mean, you already know what I look like. But you know when you just can see someone and you're like, I know what you look like, and you've done a lot to fix this area with cosmetics. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. People are always like, I'm like, did you ever think that the Trixie makeup, in addition to maybe being an artistic choice where I wanted to go big, and I'm like, did you ever think that I also look like a man out of drag? Right. Like, I can't wear a little, little soft, little, <laughs> like, no, you I don't. You can. I've seen all the old videos, we, all the date videos. Can I? Maybe. Should I? Probably not. I mean, even then, though, I think back to, like, when I was 21, I still thought I had a lot of makeup on. Uh -huh. I just, I spent so many years, we call it, like, faffing about, where you're, like, you're not, not sure what you're doing with your makeup yet, so you take super long, and you're always adding new things, but not adding enough to really make a difference. Right. Where you, like, change your lip liner, and you're like, I'm a whole new person. Right. And the other drag queens are like, you look the same every day. Let me ask you a, a real makeup question that I've never asked anyone. This is a for real question. Okay. If someone is wearing a full-ass coverage foundation, like a thick foundation. Okay, uh -huh. so for me personally, I do wear a very thick full coverage foundation, but I don't personally know how to contour with cream or like liquid. I just don't know how you to don't. do it. No, so I just use powder for everything because I'm afraid I'm going to fuck it up and I'm going to fuck it up at the wrong time. 
But my question is, what about when people are like doing tutorials and then they layer like all of these different cream products, but then they cover them all with foundation? Are they wasting money in the step? But as a makeup maven, you don't want to tell them don't buy this product because you're not going to use it, right? A lot of people do the contouring and highlighting and then foundation over. Is that what you're talking about? Well, just I don't even know because I'm I'm so like I'm not sure how that how it's even done. So I want to but when I look at it, I'm like, that just negated that, I feel like. It depends. I mean, if like one time Scott Barnes did my makeup and the jury's out on whether or not that makeup was successful, but it was he underpaints all the contour. He takes like and this isn't a secret. He does it. He tells everyone. He takes like TV paint stick by Kryolan. You know uh -huh. that product. He puts it on like a flat brush, and he like sketches all the deep parts of your face really dark first. So you right. have just lines on your face. Yeah. And then he puts foundation over it, and that's what he does on Jennifer Lopez, like everyone. So there's got to be something to it. Yeah, he knows. Well, yeah, but I mean, you know, when you're seeing people that are like, "This is the product, Mama. This is how it's done," and you're like, "Bitch." You're not doing nothing over there. Yeah, well, that's why I always say you can't trust the pretty people to sell your makeup. You can't. Like some hot 21-year-old bitch being like, this concealer, my eye bags. I'm like, what eye bags, bitch? Yeah. I'm a 33-year-old cross-dresser. I'll tell you what tired skin looks like, bitch. <laughs> Let's take a break. And we're back with Trixie Mattel. Uh, who is um, really concerned about obesity is yeah. really your platform. Yeah, that's why I'm here. I thought I would confront you in the moment. And, I wish you would. You know, talk about something right. that... Uh, actually, the elephant in the room. The elephant in the room. Actually, I quit. I haven't drank since December, and I've never... Do you like drinking? I like the feeling of being drunk, So, but I never do because I'm always driving everywhere I go. That's right. So the place to do it is Palm Springs. Yeah. Because... If I'm in Palm Springs, I'm going to be in Palm Springs. And so I want like shot, 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 shot. And then I want to nurse on something with an umbrella. That way I'm there because everything is so fucking funny to me when I'm drunk. Yeah. Everything is ridiculous. Oh, you're probably a really fun drunk, oh, huh? So fun. I don't I don't want to cry when I'm drunk. It's nothing sad, sad. But I do get a little bit like, Trixie, I'm glad we had this moment. You know what I mean? Like oh, that. I'll get a little my, there. You, you go a little like, girl, uh -huh. I love you. I love, bi bitch. This is too real. You know what <laughs> yeah, I'm talking totally. about? Like yeah, of course. I don't know why people who people who drink okay, people out there, people who drink and get ornery, get sad, get combative, why do you drink at all? Why? Why are these people drinking? Why? If you're like, every time you get drunk, you have a fight with some what what are we doing? Yeah. Why are you drinking? Right. I've never gotten drunk and gotten in a fight or like People get drunk and fist fights. Uh -huh. People get drunk and get depressed and start crying. Oh, God, there's nothing worse than like, and it gives me flashbacks to college where it's like one girl at the party who like starts crying and you're like, oh, God, yes. what is that? I mean, you yeah. know, you, well, I guess you've been doing drag long, long enough. You've probably seen a crying bachelorette or two in your life. Yeah. And you're like, what are we doing here? Why, why is this happening? And like, but I think there's people that like, cause you hear, I mean, you hear songs, like literally I was like, shot, shot, shot. You hear that and people think like, that's the best way to be fierce is like, we're going to black out tonight. We're going to get so fucked up. And it's like, why would you, you don't want to remember anything? You want to skin your knees up that bad? Right. You want to vomit in your purse? Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to do that. I want to, I want to have a really good time and like, that's it. That's yeah. how I am with sex. If I think sex might happen, I don't want to get drunk. Right. I want to be, if this is going to happen, I would like to be present for it. Sure. So, you know, I haven't had a lot of drunk hookups in my life for that reason. Because if I get this, if I start to sniff that this date or whatever might turn into sex, I'm like, let's put the drink down mm -hmm. and focus on the tall drink of water in front of us. You know what I mean? If you go on a date, do you have in your mind, okay, there's a 50 50 chance that, you know, things might go to the next level? Do you do anything to prepare yourself for the possibility or probability of like sex? Um, I mean, I'm kind of a gay prude because I usually don't have full anal intercourse okay. with someone until I don't think that's prudish until all. we've dated for a few months. Yeah. So usually it's not like even though I'm primarily a bottom, it's not like I was ever like cleaning out on the first date being like, we're going to fuck because I was like, I'm probably not going to do that. Mm hmm. 
You're so young. I ended up You're just very like young. Yeah, <laughs> it's a self cleaning up. No, I just I would just wait until I thought, okay, this is probably the date where it's gonna happen. Because mm-hmm. I like doing other stuff. Mm-hmm. I'll do a lot of stuff on the first date. I just really think having a person in me is pretty intimate. I think so. I mean, the only other, other people that go in me are like surgeons. You know what right. I mean? Right. And if you're going to put your dick in me and we don't know each other, uh-huh. personally, I just think sex positivity works both ways. And those of us who are a little prudish, like, I also want the right to be a little prudish. You have that right. Absolutely. I mean, will I suck, suck dick in a car? Absolutely. But, like, we're probably going to wait to do anal. That's all I'm saying. Right. Like, But, like, do you spray your undies with something special just in case? Or oh. Do you... Oh. I, you, if you're not wearing, like, cologne or perfume to sex, I don't really know what we're here for. Right. I always wear cologne out of drag all yeah. the time. Do you and wear, I wear perfume in drag? Ever? Every time. You, what are you wearing right I'm now? I'm from the Delta Work School of drag. Where I love you it. You spray the fucking hands, the wig. I love it. Go, And I'm also the body makeup police, so it's like... Full arms of foundation, then body spray. Because you will not get me in some random God, picture with like a white arm. Oh, you won't? No, I believe okay. in body makeup and okay. drag. Because when you wear so much face makeup, when people look down and your chest and your hands match your face, it makes your face makeup look better. Oh my God. It makes it look like, wow, that makeup, your foundation doesn't look so foundation y. Since every other part of you is, this is foundation. What I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. Do you about. get passionate about this? I am so passionate about this that I have to have several foundations. One that I can emulsify on my chest that's like a little less expensive. Uh, oh yeah. Than the face because I do have to cover something here. Right. But I want to. I want it to even like fade out with like a cream. So I want everything to. You know. I listen. I have like. I, I have to make sure and shave my shoulders if something's like sl- slightly cut out. You know uh-huh. what I mean? But then there's moles. There's like a stretch mark over here. Like I want to diffuse yeah. as much as I can. Right. Like I was d- telling you earlier, I did this outdoor event. And I was kind of feeling it. And I was like, I'm coming off the stage. I need to be in the audience. And like went out there and then I thought, <gasps> I'm like, everyone's kind of like looking down at me and I'm like, they can see every, I'm thank God I shaved my back. Like the dress was all <laughs> off. Like I thought I was giving like in your mind, you're like, look at this they, back. Yeah. But, but I re- knew that I had taken care of it, but sometimes people don't. So when you say white arm, I've seen people with just full hair arm, like Girl. arm hair. And I get it. You know, all drag is valid. I get it. You know what I mean? Is it? <laughs> but all I razors honestly, are valid too. I know I've been doing drag. Um, 15 years and I Kim and she and I are always like when did we become literally old school because we want drag queens to wear like lashes I mean when I go to a drag show there's like no lashes a flat human unit no Uh nails no body I'm like is this the swimsuit department at Target what is happening like I don't want to be like Gia Gunn where where was the glamour but sometimes I am like where's anything <laughs> yeah like, like a, just a little bit of a storyline happening like i, I just want to see because i you know i've talked about before how like forever it was all about um no pads and then everybody had like big fake hard boobs underneath the top because we weren't wearing breastplates back in the day but then now like everyone has like amazing pads and the, everything looks beautiful and huge and apple or whatever but then they're but like no boobs. i'm not putting any tits in what is that and what I'm like, that? go off because I, you know, do, do what you need to do. But I'm just curious as to where it switched. I'm not mad that it switched because I don't, I can't speak on it. But like, you know, there was a, there was a point where you were like, my eyes are not blue anymore. Sorry, they're not fucking blue. Yeah. But you still have eyeballs in your head. Right. I don't, I don't totally get it. I'm happy for, I'm happy for them. Happy for them. Um, <laughs> I'm happy for them. I'm happy for them. I'm happy it works for them. But wearing big pads with no tits is so perplexing. Yeah. Because hip pads are so much more work, so much more uncomfortable than yeah. tits. So you're picking like the worst part of body and being like, let's just do that. I don't know. You know what? All body, all body types. All body types. Um, a little order of business. You are uh, streaming with Katya this Thursday. Yes, we have a live show of Trixie and Katya Live. We have taken the recordings from several shows and amalgamated them into one clean run of the show. So mm-hmm. if you're watching it and you notice like I magically have blue eyeshadow on. Right. I didn't run backstage and do that. It was like right. two different nights. And, you know, on tour, you get sick of the same makeup, so you change it up a lot. And then it's pretty much Katya and I, but it's really starring Kelly Mantle. Love. You know, Kelly. Love. Love. Walked on stage every night, made Katya and I look like humorless bricks <laughs> with her beauty, elegance, humor, 
so professional. Um, the only difference is Katya and I like. Now, do you like a cold backstage? As cold as possible. Thank you. I mean, like ice cold, like shivering nipples. Like I want to yes! put. Yeah. Okay, me too. Kati and I keep it. You know, we had a show outdoors in Hamburg, Germany. It they moved our venue to an outdoor venue in the winter. It was November mm-hmm. with snow on the ground. Perfect. The dancers had blue lips. Perfect. It was like I'll never let go, Jack. And you were like, naked, laying in the snow. <laughs> Kati and I finished the last number of the show, and I gave her a hug, and we were both bone dry. And we were like, "Run the music again. Let's do the yeah. fucking show again." Yeah. It changes when you're not sweating and drag. When you're not hot. It changes everything. It does. It, it does. Changes everything. And I hate to say I, I love everyone, but this is the first year I've turned down a few gigs because I know that they're outdoors. I just am I am checking out of that outdoor drag experience in the heat. Unless uh-huh. it's at Trixie Motel, which, you know, I already go there and drag enough. Like heat daytime drag, yeah. I don't know about her. I think we can move drag pride events to nighttime, uh-huh. indoors. Uh-huh. I don't know why pride means drag queens in the direct sunlight with no access to air conditioning. Right. I don't know what that well, is. Well, and I've seen pictures of most recently that thing that I did. And when I tell you Sea Hag, like I, it was me and Mayhem next to each other. And every picture, and people were posting them like, oh my God, you were so like, and they're being supportive and nice. Uh-huh. But I'm like, I know you fucking have eyes. And I just had this like wiry wig on. I was like, <laughs> like I looked <laughs> so demonic. I know. And I was having a good time. Don't get me wrong. But I'm thinking to myself, it, that's documented. That, that means lives everyone forever. saw that. Yeah. And you, everyone. I mean, come on. But Palm Springs, the heat, what, uh, I have not gone to Trixie Motel, but I will go to Trixie Motel because it features everything that I love about Palm Springs. I uh-huh. really mean this. Of course, I know David Rios, a yes. dear, dear friend, but um, it captures in my mind everything that when I first started working in Palm Springs, early 2000s, um, what I always like sort of imagined. Yeah. And it's a, in a glamorized way. You can see, yes. like, tell us about, about that. And also what is the very Delta room? What would that look like? That is a great question. I would love for one of our suites to just be this set with a bed. Imagine. Or this pulls out. And they book it and you're in there and you talk, you talk I like their it. ear off. I like it. I like it. Can we maybe print up sheets where I'm like laying to the side so that way they cannot ever sleep because I'm just staring? Let's just get you a body double. You know about the other Trixie, right? I do. <laughs> just get her. I mean, there's we... a lot of girls that could do it. Let's see. Faye Beyonce was there. Faye Beyonce could do it. For, uh, do a Delta? Uh-huh. She could yeah. do that. She lives in, in the area. So we'll just have her do it. The issue is you have such a, a high standard for the way you present yourself. They have to, whoever they are, they're going to have to have like perfect hair. Ooh, I love Perfumed it. down. You think hair like this? Yeah, hair like this. I've actually really ba- barely seen you without a wig on. A wig. Do you not like? Do you like not wearing a wig? Uh, I love not wearing a wig. Um, but also another thing is sometimes I don't uh, like what I forgive in the mirror. I know is not going to be forgiving on camera. Right. So I'll look at it and I'm like, I, I'm like, I, I think to myself like, well, I, the the girls that I know that wear wigs and I think wear them very well look great and they couldn't have any more lace than this so Trixie's got to have this much lace Bianca's got to have this much lace James has to have this much lace but then when I see it I'm like girl it looks like a fucking headband this is an expensive wig oh my god what the fuck's the problem I remember that year (laughs) that year you were talking about the wig lines at DragCon do you remember this video oh my god yes (laughs) you were like you were like (laughs) you were pulling your lace down like untrimmed three inches of lace you were pulling it down literally over your eyes and you're yeah. like what yeah I have this to, is what I, everyone's this doing it's surfing this is surfing out of my head it's so <laughs> egregious and you know i have found that lace is like culturally different in australia everyone's wearing vanities mm-hmm. so they have access to this really high quality right Van- vanity has changed the wig game for a lot absolutely of people. but i noticed a few trips in australia they don't always clean that lace that's and so it'll be a thing. very high quality lace wig mm-hmm. that was cleaned about two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I have been guilty. I learned to clean my lace by seeing myself on camera and going, oh, that doesn't look like I thought it did. Mm-hmm. That looks like dirty lace. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. So I actually learned from you um, when we did a gig in San Antonio and you came in with uh you had a, a little pulley that had your wigs kind of just in that, like a hard shell. Yes. And I remember thinking to myself, she pops them out, and when they're on, they look fine. Like they look styled. And I realized that when you, when something, when the styling is built in enough, uh-huh. 
if you just throw a hairnet over it or throw it in some sort of like larger bag and sort of tie it off, as long as it's not wet, that shit's going to pop out fine. It doesn't always have to be on a head. Like, and no. I see people with like a wig with no teasing carrying it on a head. And I'm like, baby, you don't have to do that. First Girl, of all, all that goes flat, in the trash bag. A flat synthetic wig that they're like, doesn't get it on, on the head. head. Get it on the head. I'm like, f- if I... Hadn't set the precedent with Trixie of having giant wigs. Right. I'd be fucking caught. I'd be Katya where I just have right. one flat little bob, throw it in a bag because what could yeah. happen to it? What could happen? And she gets to the gig. She might brush it. Here we are. Yeah. Oh, my God. We were backstage in Switzerland and Miss Fame came to the show. And it's crazy. It's always crazy to see Miss Fame because she's like, is she 40? Is she 19? Like, it's, uh-huh. it, she really is one of those middle, middle middle age 20 year old looking people okay like she could be any age but she comes backstage and she comes up to katya has one of her tiny little bobs like a human hair bob on a uh, a wig head and fame goes by and touches it goes oh crispy which is like such a read and like she that said it so nonchalantly crispy. she goes oh crispy she said crispy. it like oh excuse me crispy fuck i'm using that what do you think of all the the, the baby drag queens obsessed with human units they all want human units. Human- another another storyline of of needing either to be washed or <laughs> yeah. conditioned or and also and continuously you, styled. Well, but I don't need like the baby hairs. Like I don't need you to just peel it off and then put it back on and let the baby hairs kind of flow all around like a halo. They're supposed to be laid. <laughs> I thought <laughs> that's what we thought. That's what we hoped. It's not it's happening. Really wild. Let's take a break. Uh, first letters by the book. Second one is in this little black purse. Okay. I'm so ignorant. People were like, oh, oh, you like, I, we didn't know that you like Luar. Like you seem to have a Luar purse all the time and it's not mine. Whose it, is it? It's Mark's. He has several of them and it's like a, a big deal. Oh. I guess. Okay. But I don't know anything because I live at Burlington Coat Factory, so I don't know any better. I have a couple fancy like designer handbags and um, I think I bought them just to see if I could emotionally bear the weight of buying something expensive mm-hmm. but i don't fit designer women's clothing so it is kind of like the only designer item i could have is right. purses so i have one balmain purse and one versace purse i think that's it and i they never leave the house because i'm scared because i have so much body makeup on i'm right. like i'm gonna ruin the purse you don't like put it under here and like walk down the street like out of drag be like material girl no i don't, don't do i have the the bag I have is a, the Balmain Barbie collection, so I use that for a while on tour. But even then, when we travel with it, it has to go in a dust slip bag. And, like, I'm not about yeah. that life. I'm yeah. about the $40 clear shoe life where, like, who cares what yeah. happens. I remember where I was clear as day. I made fun of Latrice for wearing those little lady bunny heels. I said, you are so ridiculous. Why wear a shoe at all? She, she's the same size as me. She goes, put it on. Like, kind of like put your money where your mouth is. She was uh-huh. like, put it on. And I went, <laughs> maybe I will. And I slipped them on. And it was like in a movie where like you look up and like this, the clouds part. And I was like, oh, my God, low yeah. heels. We are back with Trixie Sorry. Mattel. And we are talking about the magic of a scooty clear heel. I'm telling you, the thing of it is with those is that you can get the three inch, the four inch, the five inch. Yeah. But a lot of people don't know, depending upon, and you know this, but a lot of people don't, depending upon how you bevel in a picture, they can't tell how high they it is. They can't tell. They if you ever tell. see me in a meet and greet, and it's like this. Show me. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's know. it. And it's, and again, they get what they get. But then I started wearing like the 60s, when I started wearing the white 60s go-go boot that everyone hates because it's like, the sh- it's the shitty drag shoe. The, the cheap go-go boot is the shitty drag shoe. When I started wearing the white ones, Especially since I was playing guitar, I can't really play guitar in pumps because there's no stability. So mm-hmm. You're just like, when I started wearing the go-go boots. I was like, fuck, it's going to be really hard for me to transition to like real high heels ever again. And now I only wear real big high heels for like queen of the universe where ironically I sit behind a table where no one sees my feet. Right. So I don't know. And your transition's going fine with that. It's going really well. Uh, my transition. Yeah. In shoes. With shoes. With shoes. With shoes. With shoes. I still have fancy nice heels. I just really don't bust them out much because or when I'm at a DJ thing, I wear the fancy slutty spiky shoes down the runway when I come out. And then I go behind the DJ booth and Brandon flies in my Crocs and I put on the Crocs. Oh my God, totally. Because why nobody can see your feet. Totally. I remember in like 2012 I did a gig with Jody Harsh and she was like in little gold smoking slippers. And I remember being like, 
a drag queen in flats. That's mm-hmm. so weird. Cut to like, I don't know, 12 years later and now I'm DJing and I'm like, Jody was right. It's about flats. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do think, especially when you're at like, I think of all the years I spent at like Hamburger Mary's Milwaukee where no one could see my feet anyway. Mm-hmm. And I was in spike pumps all the time. I'm like, for what? Mm-hmm. And I'm not, inc- I like how on one hand, I'm like, if you don't put foundation on your back, you're going to jail. But then I also don't care about short heels. So I guess we all have different ideas of like what's permissible. Because we have to like, there's a tr- there has to be a trade off somewhere. Right. There really does. I but, think. Yeah, I agree. And I'm with you on smelling good. I think smelling good, I always say it's like the Muppets 4D experience of drag. Mm-hmm. Where like, you smell the person before they get to you. Right. Because I used to work with, so, you've worked with so many drag queens, I'm sure. Where like, why does your suitcase smell like mothballs? Right. Why do you smell like cat pee? Right. Why do you smell like body odor? It's like, can we can we bring the standardized amount of smelling good up to just human level in drag? People in the audience shouldn't smell better than us. Yeah, I, I a lot of times when I smell it, I'm like, you didn't shit yourself. I know that. <laughs> you don't smell like vomit. Um, you you what it is, I think, is unwashed garments that stay wet and they just throw in. And I'm like, you you realize you have to like lay that out. You know I get I mean? it. Like, I get it. I get it too. But I mean, come on. I mean, when I first did Drag Race and was like touring around clubs and stuff a few days a week, I it was definitely like, oh wow, the tights, the toe of those tights are by by Sunday, uh-huh. Frito's territory. You Beyond. know, it's a corn chip experience, right? So, but you do want to go home and wash the the body, at, at the minimum, at the minimum, at the minimum. And I feel lucky because right next to my drag room is the washer dryer, so for us, mm-hmm. it's very easy to wash clothes. But you know, I just. When somebody has a cat or mothballs, like that weird high level of smell, mm-hmm. I'm like, this is what your drag smells like, bitch. What about, what is your house? Right. You know? Right. And I think the poor person in me, like that grew up poor, was always afraid of being the smelly kid. Oh, absolutely. So my phobia of smelling is like so high that I'm always like trying to shower, trying to brush my teeth, like trying to not be the smelly kid. Well, listen, we have letters. Um, these are from very Delta listeners and viewers. Um, that we call this segment Read Me Delta. So um, we don't know what's in here, and they don't necessarily know who's here. Um, How new, fun! New letter opener, by the way, with a hummingbird on it. Isn't that cute? I love it. The Hamburger Marys. They used to play the video of you from Dear Delta talking to um, bachelorettes. Yes, do you remember that? Yes, I do. That was a World of Wonder. Yes, I worked with them before. Uh huh. It was for their. It was for. Um, what was it called? Delta, Delta, Delta. Dear Delta. Dear Delta. Yes, and you were like. Um, you said to the bachelor, not the bachelor, you said to the bridesmaid, the bride, why are you wearing white if you're a whore? Why? Why? And I think that's really valid. Yeah. It really is true. Why? And why are you throwing up ever? Why do you have shoes rolled up and put inside your bra to take off? Have you seen that? You're kidding. They're flats that you can buy that roll up and you can fit them in your bra and then you can take them out and put them on. They're like a ballet slipper. And they have that because they're like, I'm not going to be in these shoes that long. I'm planning to party and black out. So I need to have something. But like, don't you think the alcohol makes the shoes more comfortable? I would think so. I Getting would be drunk fearless. will make me keep the shoes on. I would be fearless. Yeah. Yeah. This first letter is, uh, Dearest Delta and esteemed guest, I'm writing you today about something that really bothers me. Cafes and fast food re- establishments that serve croissants, toasted pastries, and the like, that choose to microwave the pastry and bread to an inch of its life instead of using an oven or sandwich press, leaving a very sad, deflated, metallic-tasting mush. What are your thoughts? That doesn't seem very Delta. Highest regards, Very Julian from Brisbane, Australia. Very Julian. Yeah. God, is, am I dumb if I don't think I've ever noticed that? No, because I, I kind of haven't noticed either. I haven't noticed what is a – I've never noticed a microwave. I mean, it doesn't McDonald's, like, just microwave, like, a, right. an English muffin? Probably. You know, as somebody who consumes a lot of fast food, I feel like I make a lot of allowances for that fast food, and I know that, like – We know what time it is. Wh- exactly. This isn't Gordon Ramsay presents Come McDonald's. Come on. It's McDonald's. It's fine. What's your favorite fast food? Well, uh, for if I'm just saying, like, to eat – any time during the day, uh-huh. it's probably going to be Jack in the Box just because it's kind of simple and their whole menu is served all day round. So they have a lot and, of shit. They do. And I really like um, I like having several things. So I want like egg rolls and then maybe like two tacos. Do you eat the mini tacos? I love them. I've never I, had them. I like them regular. I don't want the stuff on them because I don't like my hands feeling like gross. You uh-huh. know what I mean? Um, 
What what about you? What's your favorite? Taco place? Bell. Taco oh, it is so good. I, that is. I mean, my other two favorite like corporate restaurants are probably like Chipotle and Qdoba. So uh-huh. obviously the Mexican food is more preferred, but Taco Bell is right. I'm what do you sorry. like there? She is that girl. She is, and she said she was, and she followed through on that promise. Um, I love the cheese and bean and rice burrito. Oh, that's so good. Simple. Bit, simple. The nachos and cheese, it's just simple little cheese with little chips. And the chips are good. They're like crispy. Crispy. And the cheese is like not too sugary, not spicy. Mm-hmm. Um, Cheese quesadilla. I love a normal bean burrito, but that cheese, bean, and rice shit is sickening. Mm-hmm. And for You're... a vegetarian, I'm used to just shitty fast food options. And Taco right. Bell has always had the vegetarian's backs. You know, people always talk about the fact that they cut their actual meat with oatmeal. I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think it is either. I love it. I'm not. People are like, can you believe it? Oh, well, did you did I did you think I thought that I was going to go there and I was getting a tomahawk steak? Like, that's not happening, babe. Like, also, did you know um, what is it like? uh, Meatloaf is like, isn't there cereal on that? Yeah. Don't they put like cornflakes in there? Yeah. And like rice and like all kinds of shit. People but wait, care. if you like you like Chipotle and Qdoba, have you ever had Cafe Rio? No, what is Bitch, that? You better get into Cafe Rio. You need it. What um, is it? You'll find one at the Salt Lake Airport. Oh, but okay. But you know that airport has changed so much. Like, it doesn't matter which way you go, you're walking for miles, so you earn your food. Um, That's like JFK. Yeah. Every oh, time I fly to JFK, I dread the walk from the gate to the bags. I'm uh-huh. like, this is going to be a damn near mile. Yeah. Well, the, the lady told me at uh, at Salt Lake when I was coming, I wasn't thinking about it when I went in because I was excited to be there and I was running through, running through. Um, but when I came back, she gave me my pass and she said, OK, be prepared for a mile and a half walk. And I said, oh, you're so crazy. She goes, no, no, we've gauged it. It's a mile and a half to your gate. That's the new renovations. The new renovations. How is that renovated? How but is this better? How is it better at all? And what is a people mover? It's not moving anybody like I'm. The piggish, most laziest person, and that people mover, m- maybe a half a second more than the people that were walking outside of it. Yeah, they need to make those faster. They when need we... those things like in Sacramento or whatever. Those. Yeah, or I want airports to look like. Have you ever seen Monsters Inc? Yes. Do you remember how it's like behind the scenes? It's just kids' doors flying through the air. Yeah. I want to when I get to the airport, them stick a hook. I don't know, around my neck or something. I see it. And then they hit the button, and I just fucking fly to that. Why gate. does that technology not exist? We grew up on. Uh, back to the Future. Like I grew a, up on sh- Jetsons. I was overpromised a lot of things yeah. by 2020 and beyond. We're supposed yeah. to be in flying cars. I mean, I wanted us to be in the Fifth Element now. Yeah, I don't know why we're not, because I was ready to change my nail color for like every time. Boop. Yeah, boop, that boop. technology it exists. They're hiding it from us. There's no way that does not exist. I mean, with dra- drag, definitely got easier. I mean, you've been doing drag long enough to know. Like, what? Wait, what? What women's shoe size are you? Eleven. Okay, so that's kind of hard to find. Maybe yeah. pay less. We'll have it. They used to, yeah. They used to carry up to a 13. Yeah. But, like, I remember when I first started doing drag how hard it was to find women's shoes. Mm -hmm. And lace front wigs and blonde were very hard to come by. Right. You couldn't just go to, like, the beauty supply store and find a blonde lace front wig. And if there was, James Mansfield will buy it. Like, in Milwaukee, between me, Jada, and James Mansfield, I think we were all on the blonde wig watch at all times. We'd be like, girl, go down to Victoria's. They have the, the, um, I don't know what they call it, the Super Valentina. Or like whatever they call those Not styles. Not the Super Valentina. <laughs> the Super what is Valentina. That? It was like a super long spirally blonde wig. And you know when you, I guess you probably didn't experience this because you had formal hairstyling training, right? Yeah. I went In to the beginning school. of drag, I hadn't gone to beauty school yet. So it was just a game of wig stacking. I don't know how to back comb. I don't know how to do fucking anything. Well, you do now. I do now, but in beauty school, I mean, that's, I feel like half the reason I went is because I was like, I need to learn how to do uh, wigs. Right. Here's another letter. Dear Delta, I love your show. I started a new job and I really like everyone I work with. My issue is lunch. My 30-year-old supervisor is supportive and very thoughtful. And some days on our group work chat, she even offers to buy us lunch. Out of the 11 of us, most always want Chick-fil-A. They get bachelorette excited about Chick-fil-A. None of them <laughs> seem to know that Chick-fil-A is hate chicken from a company that donates m- to millions to hate groups. These are people who are tight knit, have worked together for years and have been very accepting and kind to me. How do I let them know that I'm uncomfortable with hate chicken? I bring my own lunch and I still eat with everyone, but uh, but staring at hate chicken makes me angry and sad and uncomfortable and like I'm a liar. Like, I have to sort of be in the closet again. 
What would a woman like you do? Very Ken in Orlando. Very Ken. This is a hard one. Yeah. But you know what? I really have crossed a point of like being polite or shutting up or like worrying speaking up is going to affect my bottom line somewhere or worrying a company is going to get mad at me or a fan. If I believe in something, you better believe I'm going to fucking talk about it. And if I was Ken, mm -hmm. I would sit right there and go, so I'm going to address the obvious. Did you guys know? Maybe they don't know. Right. Maybe they don't know. Ken didn't right. say that they know. I would go, did you guys know that this restaurant uses the money they make to fund anti-gay groups? I'm assuming Ken is gay if he's watching this. Right. And if he's sad about gay chicken. I would just say something. I would make everybody feel, not make them feel bad, but I would make them very aware and then decide if they're we're going to eat there anymore. Mm -hmm. But, God, it's sort of like recycling matters. But then when you hear that corporations make up 80% of the world's like waste, you're like, well, what does it matter if I crush a Diet Coke can and throw it? Like, mm -hmm. I get the person's perspective, too. They might be like, well, who cares? My little chicken sandwich isn't going to change the system. But that's the mentality of like, my vote doesn't matter. You know, like, I don't know. What would you do? I'm always super, super concerned about where I stand. And, you know, I, I'm obviously somebody who will get on a hill and die on it. But I, I just, I, out of pure ignorance, I don't really understand how all of this lays because I love, love Diet Coke. It's my go-to. I, right. I love Diet Dr. Pepper. Well, those things are served at Chick-fil-A. So... Am I an asshole for drinking that? Like, should I be like, no, I stand against that because it's being served at Chick-fil-A and they're making money off of it. Right. So, it, so, but then people are like, well, it, it the way it trickles down is da, 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 da. And I feel like it be, ends up being this argument of people going, I'm a little more aware than you are. That's why I don't do this. And that's why you'll never be at my level. And like, I really contribute this way and you're not contributing this way. Right. And it becomes this circle where there's like a handful of people that own fucking everything. Right. That's so the thing. What do we do? I mean, it, it's like in the makeup world. If you boycott one brand, like do your homework because L'Oreal might also own them or something like what well, are you going to do? Remember when there was like a big thing where people were like, I cannot believe like Mac is finally. Uh, they're, they're, I was just going to talk about that. Yeah. And we're like. Okay, well, they made a decision to now have environmentally and animal safe brushes. This is wonderful. This is a great move. Uh, happy to hear it. But then people are like, well, they need to be canceled because for years they did this. Well, okay, so you want them to do, would you like them to just to continue to do that? Or what, what do you want? Well, what, what, even in cosmetics, especially, let's say, and I'm just throwing a brand out there. Let's say it's, I guess I could say mine, but let's say it's Bobby Brown. Uh huh. Let's say Bobby Brown doesn't test on animals. They don't test in America. They don't test on animals. But let's say Bobby Brown wants to sell product in China. Right. China mandates that all products have to be tested on animals in order to be sold there. Right. I believe. So even if you personally don't test on animals, there's entire areas of the world where if you want to sell product there, you have to know that even though you don't test animals, someone's taken and tested yeah. animals. And I'm not saying that's good or bad, but it's so much more complicated than your friends going to lunch because – they could turn around and say, well, you drive a car that is owned by somebody I don't like. Like, what if he drives a Tesla and the person's right. like, well, I don't like Elon Musk. It's really hard. Right. And it's hard for this person, Ken, to right. approach this without being what you're saying, which is like, well, you guys aren't as lightened as me. Right. And I know, Ken, you're not saying that. Like, we, we know what, what you're saying here is the truth, which is you want to do what's right. Like, you're not trying to be right. You just want to do what's right. And I think we all do. But then we're caught with this, like, well... What about this part? Like, what part in it do you have where you're not taking responsibility? Yeah, and lately the world has been so messed up. And I hate when people say that it's more messed up now because it just kind of means that it was great before, which right. it never was. Right. But, like, what the Dodgers did to the nuns, that really bothered me. Right. Really bothered me. My mind went straight to every drag queen I know we need to put on nun outfits and go to that fucking baseball game. Right. Like, fuck those people. I... Nashville, Florida, ten like Tennessee, they're all on my list and we all need to be as vocal. And literally, there was a time when I was like, no, we need to try to like keep the middle aisle and like talk to people. And now I'm like, fuck all those people. See, I'm with fuck you, Trixie. All those I'm 100% people. with you. Like, it's a new dawn. It's a new day. We're running out of time to keep being nice about everything. Yes. We have to stand our ground and say, you know what? Unfortunately, even though we've been hanging tough for a long time together, you have to decide. Are you with me or are you against me? Right. It's not like, well, I'm, I'm cool with you. Okay, I'll be right back. I got to go hate you. Like, no, yeah. no. 
I know someone of my friends tweeted today, I missed that six to seven years where people didn't hate gay people for a while. Yeah. Because it really was kind of chill for a while. It was. You're Relatively right. Relatively chill. And now it's gone back to crazy. But like just today in the news, I saw Target is moving some of their pride products to other areas of the store or removing the shelves entirely. Right. I have products in Target. Yeah. If I find out Trixie Mattel products are being pulled from Target because of conservative backlash, I'm going to not shut up about it. I'm going to tell everyone that that happened. Right. So My far, it hasn't is, happened, but I'm going to fucking tell everyone because that's wrong. Yeah. My concern is that, like, they're saying that, uh, well, the, at least the location in New York was saying that they were receiving death threats to their employees. And so they were like, we want to continue to have this, but how do we have it and not be killed? Like, we're not saying we want to pull it, but they're saying we push it. Is it still present in the store? I, my, my friend... Um, uh, and I were talking about this. His name's Scuttlebugs on Instagram, and he's a sweet, the sweetest person. And he was like sh sharing that side of it with me, and was like, "Just what you're saying. I want to speak up about this." And I was like, "I didn't want to be that like almost boomer that was like, well, we have to make compromises.' Because I thought to myself, it sounds like I'm saying make a compromise, and I don't want to make a compromise. No. But I also don't want these people killed. It's like, where are we now? Because we're, like you said, they're pushing it to the back of the fucking store. That's the thing. And I've worked with stores before where um, the products sell really well. I mean, all Trixie products, luckily, usually sell pretty well. Yeah. So when they order and reorder and reorder, I have noticed some brands or stores I work with this year. I mean, let's be honest. Nobody's a bigger like capitalist sellout than Trixie, right? Of course. Like, I do all kinds of content that's sponsored in 10 different ways. But, like... This year, especially the news and all that, I can tell the difference. Really? Brands are either it's crickets this year or some brands who they're doubling down. They're like, no, we support drag. We're giving you more money. And like, so it's right. really two ways. Some brands are starting to pick their battles and be like, they're not learning from the Budweiser situation. Right. You can't have it both ways. You can't haul us out for Pride Month and then turn around and shove us, you know, to the back and say, never mind. Like, Rainbow washing, we hope at least if you do it, you follow through. Right. Don't throw me in your window of your store until someone gets mad and then take me down. That's just humiliating. Right. right. And that's not happened yet. I'd like to stress that that hasn't happened. But we've reached a point where in the past I would be like, I don't want brands to be mad at me. I don't want companies and networks to be mad at me. You know, I just found out Trixie Motel is on a network in Australia where they've edited out every reference that David and I are together. So it's Trixie Motel, but it's just a couple of guys making. I'm like, wow. I'm like, so if you're going to edit out all the parts where I'm gay, but not edit out the fact that I'm in drag. Right. Do you believe people watching this think this is some scrappy young girl and her renovation? Right. Don't fucking buy my show. Stream it. Put on your platform. If you are going to edit out parts of me that you don't like. That's so fucked up, right? Why it's have the show? It's fucked up. Imagine, imagine Drag Race, but they edited it out. Every, every, like, reference to being gay. Yeah. yeah. Drag race they show in Florida is probably 12 minutes long. Don't say gay, Bill. That's probably, you know, it's don't, don't, I, I, I used to be like the crumbs. Oh, oh, look, uh -huh. gay people got propped up. Oh, uh -huh. oh, you love drag? Oh, we got to be in this celebrity's music video, whatever. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like, book it and pay for it or right. leave us alone. Right. Like, don't haul us out so that you look cool. Don't ask me to be in your video and tell me how great of an opportunity it is with your no paycheck. Right. That's that's all so tired and over. It is tired it's and tired over. tired and over. We are fighting for our lives. That's the difference now. And, you know, like, it's just just as you said, like, there's there's uh, there's a difference between wanting to do something with someone that uh, a, a friend that you're like, oh, well, we're going to do this little project together. If you have a passion project, but a corporation is not a passion project. No. Pride is not a passion project. No. Working for a beer company or whatever it is, it's not a passion project. Be upfront and say, we are selling this. We have $9,000 or we have $1,000 or we have $1. Tell me the fucking truth. Follow through with it. If I agree to that dollar amount, that's what I agree to. But don't fucking come at people and be like, well, this is a great opportunity. We don't need any more visual opportunities. People already know who we are. So I'll decide if it's a great opportunity for me. Yeah. I'll, decide I'll decide if it's a great opportunity. I Like I said, I kind of feel two ways about it. Because like on one hand, if you're a swimsuit company and you put a trans model in your ad, I'm like, oh, that's great. Yeah. On the other hand, I'm like, well, does that model want that brand to tout and drag like brag about and and um trans identify them maybe not even 
Right. Maybe that model didn't even consent to like right. the world knowing what their sex was at birth. Right. Sometimes I think about that too, where I'm like, on one hand, I want visibility. If there's a trans person in an ad, I'm it, it lightens my day if I know that. I'm like, oh, that's great. Right. On the other hand, I'm like, God, does that model want everyone to know that? So I try to be like you, where I'm in no way a moderate, but I try to see every situation with both sides. Because it's always way more complicated than you're evil and I'm not. That's not reasonable. We try, but we're kind of done with it now. I know. Like, we're done with it. Like, it's not getting us anywhere to not stand our grounds. And unfortunately, <laughs> people don't realize that you have to stand your ground. You have to lose something in the way. And if it's losing connections with people or friends or people who all, well, fuck them then. Oh, Girl, sorry about it. Fuck off. I know. I'm at the point now where I'm like, if you, uh, I'm afraid of coming. Uh, obviously, you shouldn't come out unless you have somewhere safe to live, et cetera. But it's like, don't talk to your mom. Right. Make that bitch figure her shit out and yeah. then she can talk to you. Yeah. I know it's easier said than done, but it's like, I'm sick of us having to swallow the discomfort so that all these cis straight people around us feel the most comfortable. Right. So and sometimes gross. I look in the mirror, I'm like, this is not why I started doing drag to make sure that everyone in this room was comfortable with it. Yeah. I could sit here and talk to you all day long I know, I'm about sorry. this. No, no, I'm don't be sorry. I I could because I'm in a hundred percent agreement with you. And it's like it's so weird, like uh, this full circle sort of idea of yes, I want I want to agree or, or yes, I want to have a conversation with people, but it's no more conversations. So I know. now we're all the way back to where we were disagreeing with these people. It's fucked. Um, I, I love talking to you too. I often wish I had a direct line to you. I guess I have your number. Yeah. <laughs> where sometimes I see something I hate and I go like. Delta would hate this. <laughs> like, yeah. Like, I, I complaining for me is part of dealing with something, and I'm I'm such a natural complainer, and I'm not saying maybe that's you, but sometimes no, I'm it like, is. Sometimes I'm like, I want someone to co-sign on this being stupid, or this this or like you know. Luckily, I have like kimchi or someone where I'm like, I can always send her a picture of a bad wig, and she'll be like, oh bitch, you know. Yeah. You need like your drag friend that you can send something unacceptable to where they can just go girl no i have an arsenal there i have twenty four thousand images on my phone and most of them are pictures of people's rip tights right or right. Yeah. somebody's wig or yeah yeah yeah, yeah. or like or, a screenshot of someone on tv that's like their wig is completely rotted yeah and they're living for themselves thank you for being here of course thank you for this i mean i think we should pick this up again I would love to come back. I'm a lifelong fan. I, just, yeah, I love you. Fairy Delta. I just love what I love you it. do. I, I, love, I love what your visibility does for everybody. And I love that um, um, you have just your hand in so many things that you actually are passionate about. You actually love. It's not like Trixie Mattel lawnmowers. I don't know. Or though maybe you could have lawnmowers. <laughs> I know. There's been a few products where um, there's a few things I still want to do. Um, lawnmowers? Not lawnmowers. I would love to do an ice cream truck someday. Ooh, because I love good. ice cream. But that's good. You know, favorite I favorite flavor off the top of your head. Oh, Ben and Jerry Cherry Garcia. So I think good. it's just amazing. It's cherry ice cream with dark chocolate pieces. It's fucking so good. And the Froyo version, which is half the calories, is delicious. You know what you would love? That um, reminds me of the the smaller sodas. They have Ben and Jerry ice creams that are little tubs that are love that big. her. Love her. Me. I don't love that. I need I need the whole thing. Yeah, you're like, now I have to open six of them. Right, right. Exactly. Thank you all so much for listening to Very Delta or watching on YouTube. You can search for Very Delta on your podcast apps. We come out every Monday. And you can find us right here on the Mom Podcast YouTube channel. Special hello to everyone watching on YouTube. Please subscribe to Mom Podcast so you don't miss an episode. Send your questions to readmedelta at gmail.com. And you can follow me on Instagram, of course, Everyone can follow you everywhere at. I'm at Trixie Mattel, but I'm actively trying to secure at Trixie. Oh. I think it'd be so easy. So I'm actively, I'm Trixie Mattel right now, but I might become at Trixie. I think it'd be so easy. Sometimes when I refer to you, like if I'm talking to Raja and I'll go, oh, did you see this thing of Trixie? Or I'll talk to uh, Fina. I'll, I'll say um, sec Sexy Manuel. I call you that, <laughs> or I'll say Sessi, S-C-S-S-I, because like some people with an accent, when they say like someone's sexy, oh, she's Sessi. She's Sessi. Um, so did you see Sessi Manuel? Sessi Manuel. I oh, my God. Uh, Amanda Lepore can't quite say exes, uh -huh. and she says Tritzi. Oh, Tritzi. Hi, Tritzi. With like a T. <laughs> yeah, T-R-I-T-S-I-E. Uh, you can also follow the show on Instagram and TikTok at Very Delta, because if you're not, you're really only getting half the Delta. Join me next week right here. And until then, keep things very Delta. This episode of Very Delta was brought to you by Orange Diamond, the official emoji of the Very Delta show.
To listen to Very Delta one day early and ad free, sign up for Mom Plus at mompodcasts.plus. Very Delta is produced by Moguls of Media, aka Mom. Hosted by Delta Work and produced by Mark Jacobs. Engineered by Margot Padilla and editing by Doug Robertson. Executive produced by Willem Belli, Alaska Thunderfuck, Big Dipper, and Joe Cilio. Hi, it's me, Delta Work. Do you like to see me go off? Well, if you do, hit subscribe, turn on your notifications, because we don't want you to miss any of our mom podcast exclusive content.